topic uh, that we will look at is hazard identification and risk assessment. So hazard identification and risk assessment is important and it's actually a legal requirement for oil and gas industry. This is simply because from all of the uh, potential hazards that we've seen just now, so, well, although you say that there are accidents, but uh, in my opinion, those things can be avoided, right? We can actually avoid those kind of accidents. Or, or I mean, like some of it, well, not saying the, the harsh weather, not that, but the other things. Some of it were, we can avoid them you know, from happening. So, so it's important that we identify whatever hazards that can occur around you and then be ready for it. Okay, for example, um, okay, in your workplace, like right now, you are, uh, wherever you are right now, where, whether you are on your desk, in your room, or, or are you on your dining table at home, or you have your own office, or I don't know, wherever you are, on your bed. Um, if you look around you, do you see what kind, do you see any hazards around you? Yes. Yeah. So what kind of hazard do you see? Why you bersepah? Bersepah? Yes. Why you bersepah? I have that too. So I have this wire here, which is dangling from the table and it goes to the point. And it's uh, dangerous because somebody might trip on it. Maybe I might trip on it if I, I just, you know, just forgot about it. So it's good that um, maybe I should uh, move my computer somewhere else or I should not uh, be charging my computer right now while I'm using it. Or, um, I know it's there, maybe I should lock the door, my office door, and not let anybody come near me because of that. Right, so that's how I, I eliminate the, the, um, the harm that can cause from the dangling wire. And then what else? What other hazards? What other hazards do you see around you? Anything? No, you do, your house is safe, so safe. You don't have any hazards. Charge phone was using. Hmm. Okay. Um, I have uh, one hazard. Uh, okay. For example, this plant, right? I have I have a house plant behind me. Um, I will consider that as a hazard because that plant is uh, poisonous and I have cats around the house. I have two cats sleeping right now down here, one here, another one down there. So these cats, they like to eat leaves. They like to eat vegetables. They like to eat salad. They're crazy cats. Okay? So this, this plant is poisonous. So um, uh, I have to eliminate it by uh, putting it somewhere that they cannot reach it so that they, they don't eat it. So that's how I eliminate the hazard. I, I still want the plant here. I just don't want the cats to eat it. Okay. Hmm. All right. Um, so uh, when um, so in a company, uh, especially big organization, I mentioned that they have their own uh, HSE department. So one of the tasks of the HSE department is they have to do this uh, hazard identification and risk assessment. They have to identify what are the types of hazards that, that's uh, around them. So how they do this is normally um, uh, how to identify hazards. You, you just have to walk around. You just walk around your workplace and then jot down uh, if you see any kinds of hazards. Yeah. And then uh, sometimes uh, different people will have different point of view. Sometimes some things may not be a, a hazard at all for you, but for some people it is a hazard. So you will want to have multiple people doing this to identify the hazards and then you compare your notes. Okay? And then uh, besides that, uh, maybe sometimes you don't realize it by just walking. You can ask people who are working at that area because they know more. So you can ask them, interview them 
uh, get information of what, uh, uh, how do they feel about work, working at that place? What, what's, do they see any kind of uh, danger around them? Okay, so you identify the hazards. Okay, uh, okay like for example, this cartoon here shows that. Okay, so this person has a crocodile at home. Um, I'm not sure why. It's probably his pet. But then, even though you have a pet crocodile, even though it's supposed to be a pet, but uh, you have to understand that they are, uh, by instinct, they can eat you. Okay, they have um, sharp teeth. Uh, just like, you know, just like when I have cats, they seem harmless. They're just sleeping, not doing anything. But if I, I don't know, sometimes they just go crazy. They just want to bite me. Or uh, maybe or I accidentally step on them and then they get they get angry and then they scratch me back, you know. So those are hazards. Okay. And then uh, once you have identified the hazards that you can find around you, then you have to start estimating um, or evaluate what is the risk that is associated with that hazard. Yeah? What kind of harm can that hazard cause you? Okay. For example, then you have that crocodile, so you, you analyze, uh, are the, um, the teeth sharp enough to eat me, you know, for example, or is the, can I, can I fit in the, the, the mouth, you know, for example, or, um, yeah. All right, and then, uh, so, and then that's the hazard control hierarchy. Here's the, what to do if you know that you have a hazard and you know that there is this risk to it so what should you do with the hazard so one thing that you can do is firstly you can eliminate the hazard so you have the crocodile maybe you can just kill it you know just just take them away um you know like completely remove it from the workplace so it's not there anymore okay or, or for example like i have this plant maybe i can just uh, just put it away. Okay, I don't need to have a plan behind me. Okay, so that's elimination. Um, uh, the uh, another uh, the, the next hierarchy will be to substitute. Okay, um, let's say I I don't want to eliminate my plant, uh, but um, I still want a plant near me. Okay, so maybe I can substitute with a with a less harmful plant. I can maybe throw that and then put an aloe vera, for example, that's less harmful. Uh, so I substitute, okay? So you can substitute the crocodile and then get a cute uh, little kitten, for example, okay? So that's substitution. Substitution is you replace that material with something else. And then the third in the hierarchy is to isolate. So isolate is like you're putting it in the cage so that people can, you don't have access to it. Yeah, you like you put a barrier or something like a gate or anything similar to it okay so that uh, uh the people within the workplace will not get to it okay because it's surrounded so that's isolate so so like uh in my case for my house plan how i isolate is um uh, i put it on a high pedestal like this so that the cats will not be able to go on it so it is it's um it's like off limits for them so they can't jump on it okay and then next in the hierarchy is engineering control okay so what is engineering control so engineering control is something to do with any kinds of um, um equipments that you use to control the hazard uh, for example uh using sensors using alarms uh what else um you install some kind of um yeah for example i want to put a sensor somewhere near my plan if uh it can sense the cat's movement if the cat comes to make a sound uh, alarm so that it scares the cat so that kind of thing or maybe like if uh has it such as um if you talk about like hazardous gas for example so engineering control would be to have ventilation system a good ventilation system so that um, you don't have the accumulation of the toxic gas. And then um, next is administrative control. So administrative control is more of the um, 
tasks of the HSC department where they, they give uh, trainings to the personnel, they give, uh, I know, like workshops or talks or um, re refresher trainings. Uh, what else? Um, um, just or and even providing a uh, signage just like that, Pro providing safety signage saying that, OK, be careful, there's a crocodile in this area to so put a signboard. So this, um, I guess this don't really work for me. If I put a signage, my cats will understand that it's it means that no eating plants. I guess I can train them not to eat. I'm not sure how. OK. So number six in the uh, hierarchy is to use PPE. So PPE is really the um, the last last uh, what I call the last option because PPE is um, uh, PPE only only defends that one person. Okay, it doesn't uh, it, it it doesn't work for the other people. It's only for that person who's using it. So that's why that's the like a uh, last uh, last line of defense. So you can wear armor so that um, uh, the crocodile can't bite through the metal's shield. All right. So so why is it that I say the PPE is considered as the last resort and it has a control? Simply because it only protect, protects one person. Okay. It doesn't protect every other person, but just uh, but just you. And then uh, it only protects if it is worn properly. And um, um, there are also issues such as it's not easy to fit into some of the PPE because of different sizes and sometimes not practical. Uh, some of it is not ergonomic. It just uh, restricts your movement and so on. And then also it's not easy to enforce rules to make people wear PPE just like like right now, if you ask people to wear face masks, some people just don't want to use it or tell people to follow SOPs. They just want don't want to do it. Okay. And there are also other issues such as training. You have to give training on how to use proper PPE and then you have to replace some PPE because um, some of it are disposable. You can't use it many times and then some needs to be repaired and so on. So that's why it's considered as a last resort. Okay, so as a summary, uh, hazard control hierarchy is uh, as shown in this table. So we discussed this already. Firstly, is to eliminate, which is to completely remove the hazard from the workplace so that it's not there anymore. And then secondly, if you cannot eliminate, then you substitute with something else uh, with a different material or process that's less hazardous. And then number three is to isolate. You can put a barrier or whatever is similar uh, between the hazard and the people within the workplace, like a fence. And then uh, number four in the hierarchy is using engineering control, where you can install uh, machinery such as ventilation system, uh, guarding on machinery or sensor systems. And then number five in the hierarchy is administrative control. Uh, this is when uh, the safety personnel can give safety briefings, safety trainings, give work procedures and put up safety awareness signages. And finally, the last resort is for that person itself to wear PPE. So this is the last line of defense to protect that one worker if all of the above measures uh, don't work. OK, all right, so uh, you can read more on this on the hazard control hierarchy uh, on this link. So th this link is actually given on Moodle. OK, uh, 